guys and welcome to Jurassic Collectibles. Um, today we're going to be focusing on the NECA Prometheus toy line and we're going to be having a closer look at the engineer in his pressure suit uh, from the sci-fi epic of last year and uh, this one was directed by Ridley Scott and uh, was a film that was sort of in the world of aliens um, so if you like the original alien film I think this one would be for you. Uh, for younger viewers, I wouldn't recommend you watch it because it's quite a scary film. Now, I've already reviewed the David figure, so if you haven't seen that video, click on the link below to go and check that one out. But today, as I said, we're going to be focusing on the engineer, and then we'll be doing a size comparison between these two. Okay, on with the show. Here's the engineer in his plastic bubble, and as you can see, there's a wonderful level of detail evident even inside the box. You can see here it says engineer with pressure suit. And uh, this one does not come with accessories because he's so big. On the back here we've just got a nice picture of the engineer figure. And down at the bottom we've got a read up here about the film Prometheus. Please pause if you want to read. And uh, as it says there it's the engineer in his pressure suit. So there is a version of the engineer um, in his chair suit. Uh, but in this case we've got him out of that suit. Okay so let's get this guy out of his packaging. I can't wait. Stay tuned guys. The first thing you notice when you get the engineer out of the packaging is his sheer size. He's ginormous compared to traditional figures and he weighs quite a lot as well making him more like a figurine than an action figure. His articulation is a little bit lacking and I'll go into more detail in a minute but first let's have a look at his sculpt and paintwork. So starting with the head, I really like the head sculpt. I think it's really accurate to what we see in the film. The only thing I don't like is his eyes. I feel that his eyes are a little bit stark and a little bit blue for what we see in the film. I'm pretty sure in the film they were almost black, but uh, apart from that, it's a really good job. And then as we go down the body, we've got this sort of HR Geiger effect, similar to what we've seen in the Alien films. So that sort of harks back to their creators and uh, the engineers being the creator of all life forms. Um, this makes sense. As we go down the body, you can see all this lovely weathering and detail that's been done in the paint job. And it really does look very organic indeed. He's even got his organic socks on. On the back you can see the detail just continues and wow! A really staggering figure. I mean it's more like a statue than an action figure. I just love the amount of weathering and detail that goes into this Necker figure. Really, really outstanding. I just wanted to focus on these hands because the detail that's gone into their sculpt is really, really amazing. You can even see the wrinkles on the individual knuckles and the little fingernails have been sculpted in too. In terms of articulation, the engineer is a little bit limited. He can't really turn his head that far. He's very, very stiff due to the sculpt work on the neck. Um, because of that limitation, he also can't look up and down very much. So it's a bit of a shame that his, his head is so limited. But uh, there we go. His arms can flip right round, although they're very stiff and his elbows do have a joint there as well so you can bend at the elbow. The hands are also on ball joints so you can actually waggle those hands around which is quite nice. Uh, there we go, so just to give you an idea of the freedom of movement. And then he's got an ab crunch joint there so he can bend over but again it's limited by the sculpt. The left and right is actually quite mobile compared to David um, so that's quite cool. Um, on the back, this section is actually made of a rubbery material so you can actually push in his bum cheeks there and also round here this is all rubbery as well. I'm assuming so that the articulation on the legs isn't hindered by the sculpt. Now the only problem is the legs are in fact hindered by this. Um, you can't move the legs forward or backward at all. I mean that's crazy. Like, I want to make this guy do the splits, but I can't. So all I can do is put his legs out to the side and get a sort of a half splits going on because this is a rubbery material. But I'm a bit disappointed that I can't put him into a running pose. I can't move the legs forward and backward. And that is a real shame. On the knees, you've got a bend, so you can bend these 
like that, but it's not double jointed like it was on David, so I can't bend it right back. And then on the feet, again, we've got a ball joint, so we can waggle those around like so. So now that you've seen the articulation, let's bring in David, his counterpart, to see how they scale up next to each other. So here they are, reunited at last. David and the engineer scale up really well together. What I love is the fact that David is well articulated enough to look up at the engineer, and the engineer is tall enough to put his hand on David's head, as we see in that climactic scene in Prometheus. I really love the fact that these two scale well together, and that's the main reason why I bought these two as a pair. So I'm so glad that Necker stayed true to the scale of the original figures. Here's a closer look at the scene I've created, using the scale difference of David and the engineer. Really cinematic. So there we have it, guys. Today we had a look at the Necker Prometheus Engineer. Uh, if you haven't seen the David video, check out the link below. Let me know if you own either of these figures or any of the NECA toy lines. Uh, rate, comment and subscribe if you're able. And I'll see you in the next video review.